Your research team has been looking at the sort of new kids on the block of international aid, Brazil and China. Uh, public opinion has it that they are critically changing African agriculture development as they provide a combination of private investment, lending, trade, and cooperation arrangements with a lot of impact. Some view this as a challenge to the old rules of the game of the global aid architecture. Now, did your research substantiate this view? Yes, there's lots of um, talk about the um, Brazil, which is the country um, I know best, and other um, emerging development actors um, increasingly changing um, the rules of the game in international development. And um, in a way, uh, we're seeing some of that already happening. The Busan Global Partnership for um, Effective Development Cooperation is an expression of the um, growing influence of these actors um, in um, development discourse. Uh, for example, the notion of uh, development finance, which has recently become um, so popular, is a reflection of uh, the reality of uh, cooperation programs practiced by uh, these emerging actors, including the very explicit link between um, uh, cooperation and um, business agendas. So you think that some of the perceptions are on the way that they do business in, in China and in Brazil, is that just a classic cliche or maybe cultural ignorance that might superimpose what might very well be just a normal shift in the geopolitical power setup as history unfolds? Well, let's focus on Brazil and on how Brazil practices agriculture. There's a lot of talk about Brazilian um, agriculture model um, being one um, closely associated with um, large-scale, uh, very sophisticated um, agribusiness development. And that's no doubt um, one of the uh, models that um, Brazilian agriculture has developed over the years, but not, that's not uh, the entire story. Brazil is the home of a variety of um, agriculture development experiences um, which are um, very different from one another. Uh, and what, what is interesting about Brazilian cooperation in, in African agriculture is that Brazil is uh, um, offering a range of um, different experiences, not necessarily um, fully coherent to one another, but from which African countries, if um, they uh, are able to manage um, the collaboration with, uh, with Brazil well, will be able to pick um, the um, experiences and policies that suit best um, their, um, their agriculture sectors. Within your research on the BRICS involvement with agriculture development, you had a particular look at, Bra at Brazil, as you just mentioned, um, which has become a, a leading trader of a range of agricultural commodities now. Um, it is often portrayed as a model. Would you agree to that on the basis of your findings? Is it a model? I wouldn't talk of one Brazilian model. I think there are a variety of experiences. You have Brazilian um, associated mainly internationally with, with its um, claim to be successful agribusiness sector, but there's also a very um, long tradition of family farming, of um, working with indigenous communities to uh, um, support the, uh, the preservation of um, um, indigenous seeds and practices. So there are a variety of experiences, a variety of um, so-called models that, um, that Brazil could potentially offer the world. So in a, in a way, the question is always with model comes the next point, it's role model. So it's not a role model, wouldn't you say? Because Brazil positions itself sometimes as the sort of alternative from the south, uh, especially with the Rome-based agencies. Um, so when I gather that rightly from what you just said, you would say that's not really true because you, you say it's a, it's a model, but it's not a role model. Is that true? I think it's very, very common to, to hear the claim that 
Brazil's experience are particularly well suited to African agriculture because of um, agroecological affinities, because Brazil is still a, in a way a developing country. Um, but um, I would be very uh, cautious with um, um, considering Brazil as, um, as, a, as a role model. I think there's many things about how Brazil has been developing its agriculture sector that could be of interest to Africa. But um, this idea that Brazil, Brazilian agriculture is a success story is um, a bit of a myth, and I think uh, the research we've been doing, um, the Future Agriculture Consortium on Brazilian Africa, is, is emphasizing that, that aspect. You know, uh, the history of Brazilian agriculture is one also of controversies. Um, the um, the expansion of the uh, Brazilian agriculture frontier, no matter how, how um, um, no matter the achievements in terms of productivity and in terms of market shares, this this has been achieved at the cost of um, um, sustainable uh, natural resource management, um, at the cost of uh, equitable um, land um, land distribution. And Brazilian smallholder farmers and Brazilian social movements have been very actively uh, contesting some of these experiences. So it's not all rosy. And I think African countries need to be well aware of the full, the full story of uh, Brazil's agricultural um, development. So in a way, you, you say there's contraindications in a way that makes it a non-model even. Do I read you right? I think that there's interesting things about uh, Brazil's agricultural development, including, for example, on the way that the state has uh, related to non-state actors, how, how um, um, farmers groups and um, social movements have, have uh, been able to engage um, and put forward some um, um, certain um, uh, policies and have shaped shaping certain policies in the, in the sector. So there's a lot to learn from those experiences, but you know there's also a history of um, of contestation, of controversies, of social and environmental costs um, of some of the um, policy um, options that um, the Brazilian government has um, has chosen. I want to come a little bit to the food security and the contribution that the BRICS countries uh, have in that regard. At the last BRICS summit, the leaders of the uh, BRICS countries reaffirmed their support for food and nutrition security in Africa. Um, what do you make of that? Is it just a political statement that doesn't really have any correlation in your uh, research findings? There's been a lot of attention on the BRICS and, uh, and, and the BRICS summit, so it's, it has become a very high-profile event. So being in the spotlight in such a, a high-profile event is a good thing. I think even, you know, a broadly stated political commitment is a, is a good step. But of course, it's not the end of the story. What, what matters is what, what comes next in terms of uh, how these uh, well-intended commitments are turned into, into concrete action. And um, so far, there's no evidence of any sort of concerted effort amongst the BRICS in terms of um, how to um, support um, um, agricultural development um, in Africa in particular. Um, of course, uh, there's also a lot of talk about the BRICS Development Bank. And um, once established, this could be a potentially important source of um, uh, development finance for uh, the agriculture sector if this commitment is, is, is maintained. In terms of the bank and the summit and your research, what are the one, two main points um, that you would think where China and Brazil are doing the things differently from the classic, classical donors? One aspect is the link between the cooperation agenda and the business agenda. Some African countries, or at least in the research that we've been doing, we've been talking to uh, government officials in, uh, in African countries, and they've been saying that this is a, a, a good development, that uh, at last um, um, there's you know, a very sort of hands-on attitude towards development, and China and Brazil are bringing are, are important sources of, um, of private investments 
um, with this being connected also with, uh, with cooperation initiatives. So um, there's uh, quite a lot of optimism on um, um, a different way of doing the cooperation business in the agriculture sector. But we have to be, I think, very uh, careful in um, you know, buying just this sort of um, optimism. We need to wait and see uh, what sort of impact these uh, development cooperation programs with their links with um, with um, uh, investment initiatives, what, what are they achieving in terms of social, social justice um, and in terms also of um, environmental sustainability? And of course, how are they contributing to, to, to food security and, and nutrition security in Africa? So would you say that their involvement is indeed more hands-on? Is it the opposite of sort of uh, budget contributions? And isn't that maybe where the criticism was lying in the first hand against the traditional donors, that they were too hands-on, too intrusive? Hands-on in a different way. I think what's quite interesting about, and again, I'm talking about Brazil mainly, what's interesting of their approach towards development cooperation is that you see Brazilian civil servants, Brazilian scientists and uh, practitioners um, working uh, in the field side by side with their African counterparts. So they are bringing their own personal experiences as civil servants back in Brazil into, um, in, into Africa. And I think that's quite an interesting development and something that is very highly valued by, um, by their African um, counterparts. But of course, the uh, potentially negative side of that is that um, there is what seems to be a predisposition towards a very technocratical approach to uh, cooperation in which there is an assumption by the Brazilian scientists and civil servants that you can almost transfer directly those experiences into African um, countries, provided that you adapt to, in the case of agriculture, to local soils and, uh, and climate um, and market conditions. But what, what we're finding is that um, there's still relatively little understanding of um, African um, local cultures, local institutions, the local political economy, despite claims of affinities, affinities that are based on history, a common history and in some cases a common language. There's a lot of differences in terms of the way that um, politics operate and the way that institutions operate. Um, so all of this, I think Brazil has to um, accumulate experience, learn how to work with its African counterparts better, and then build this into uh, their, um, their cooperation and exchange programs. You mentioned already that the political commitments apparently haven't really trickled down into concrete action on the ground in terms of food security. But you also mentioned that there is a lot of experiences that can be transferred, even though you need to find a way to figure out what can be transferred or is useful to be transferred without having costs. Where would you say is the, the main prospect in the development? If you can give me a little bit of a judgment call there. When I say that there's no evidence of what the contribution of the BRICS is going to be towards agriculture and food security, I meant in terms of a concert, concerted effort as a group. But then individually, I think there's plenty of evidence that these, these countries are very actively involved in uh, cooperation exchanges that focus on food security. And let me again focus on the Brazilian case. There's a few um, ongoing cooperation, technical cooperation programs that focus specifically on food security and nutrition. And in fact, one of them involves um, a few members of the Global Donor Platform uh, as well. Brazil is working alongside uh, the World Food Program, food, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the UK Department for International Development in, I think, five African countries uh, to uh, promote uh, links between um, smallholder farmers and school feeding programs and food stocks for humanitarian assistance called the Food Acquisition Program. Um, and it's a recent cooperation program which builds on a similar experience um, um, put um, into practice in, in, in Brazil. So there are some initiatives uh, happening. Of course, we need to wait and see what sort of 
um, outcomes um, um, arise um, and how different they are doing business and to what effect. But the other thing that I would add is that besides country level uh, programs um, for supporting food security objectives, I think it's quite important the role that some of these actors can play in global fora. And I would like to highlight that the current um, uh, Director General of, of FAO, uh, José Graciano da Silva, is a, a prominent um, Brazilian agronomist who's played um, a, a major role into um, uh, putting forward some initiatives focused on food security in his home country in Brazil while he was part of um, Lula da Silva's government. Next year is going to be uh, uh, the family farming year. The UN, uh, the United Nations declared 2004 as the, uh, 2014 as the family farming year. And I think José Graciano will call on Brazil's experience with its particular farming system. Uh, and um, throwing on the fact that um, family farming is claimed to be responsible for uh, producing um, most of um, of the food uh, supply in the domestic market in Brazil. So there are uh, experiences to draw on, and there are different fora that um, um, could be useful in terms of putting forward uh, policies and programs um, focusing on food security. Where do you, you see the one main positive prospect of the development with the BRICS countries or with the China and Brazil involvement in Africa, in a nutshell? Well, I think they add variety. They add. Um, they bring competition into the um, uh, development cooperation um, uh, system. So um, that's a very positive thing. Um, they also bring some concrete experiences of agriculture development. Um, it is important that um, such experiences are adapted to local context, so it's not a, only a matter of, um, of, of transferring them and adapting technologies. But I think there is um, um, a range of um, um, policies and, and programs uh, which have been uh, applied um, in, in, in their countries that could be, uh, uh, of, um, could, could, be work as, could work as a source of inspiration to, uh, to African countries. How could the Global Donor Platform members, or donors in general, support cooperation between Africa and BRICS adequately, and which practices are probably better to be discontinued? I think in terms of supporting the BRICS-Africa interaction, the so-called South-South and some quarters, uh, I think there's a lot of work that, um, um, that needs to be done on what sort of um, um, achievements um, are, are being, um, what sort of difference is being made. Um, and, um, and the donor, the donor global platform as a, as a knowledge exchange organization, I think would be very well positioned to stimulate that sort of analysis, that, that interaction. As I said, because there's bilateral cooperation uh, arrangements in place, individual members of the platform are in the middle of the engagement between the BRICS and African countries. So just learning more about those experiences, what are mo what, what's motivating those trilateral cooperation arrangements, and, um, and how where um, beneficiary countries stand, um, what's their position on these new forms of, of collaboration, would be quite, quite an important contribution to our understanding about, um, about the BRICS in African agriculture. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.